One game that I've been anticipating is Forspoken, the Square Enix published title that's this sprawling open world isekai of sorts. There's a trailer from five months ago, you can see it for yourself I think. From a visual standpoint it does look gorgeous and it's got some interesting gameplay elements going on. The combat looks interesting and there's just a lot of flair here that appeals to me. I don't know how the game will turn out but I certainly wish it the best. It's one of the ones that I am keeping my eye out for. Not fully sold on it per se, but one that I hope to see more of. So why do I bring this game up today? Well, there is a new trailer that came out for it a couple days ago. They released it on Twitter. You can see right here, a beautiful and cruel new land, twisted monsters, an array of magical abilities, sentient jewelry. Welcome to the world of Forspoken. But looking at the numbers, you can see that it is approaching ratioed levels, 14,000 likes, but a lot of retweets. And, well, that's because a lot of people have been sort of ridiculing this trailer, saying that this is not a good way to represent the game. And the optics surrounding the game was negatively impacted as a result of this trailer. So I'm going to play this trailer for you guys, and I think a lot of you will perceive what I mean. Here we go. So let me get this straight. I'm somewhere that's not what I would call Earth. I'm seeing freaking dragons and, oh yeah, I'm talking to a cop. Yeah, okay, that is something I do now. I do magic, kill jacked up beasts. I'll probably fly next. So, um, <laughs> I think the fault entirely lies in the writing of that set of dialogue combined with the way the trailer was edited. The energy of the actor doesn't match the energy of the trailer, so it creates this really awkward dissonance where the character is, like, hyping this thing up, like, oh my god, look at all of these fantastical things that I can do. But the trailer has, I don't know, more kind of chill and more serious and mystical vibes to it. And it just, it, it takes away from the seriousness of the trailer. Not to say that Forspoken is a serious game, but it's almost as if all this is being taken as a joke instead of, wow, a sense of wonder, which is what I feel like Forspoken is going for. But all of that is compromised by what I'll call the MCU vibe that is evoked from this, where serious moments or, or moments of, of emotional impact are undercut by, let's throw some quips in there, hello fellow kids. That's the vibe that it gives off, and there's this tweet that uh, does the same for God of War in a satirical and joking manner. And you can see right here, this tweet's already garnered more likes than the trailer proper, whose likes this likes ratio is getting worse. And so imagine if a God of War trailer was released, whose dialogue was, who me? Yeah, I'm a freaking god as it turns out. Yeah, I'm all about that axe life. That handsome devil next to me, fam. That's literally my boy. He can thank me for his good looks and formative trauma. It's not easy fighting heckin' Vikings. But honestly, being a parent, Ragnar rocks. But yeah, it's that level of dialogue that doesn't immerse you in the game, but rather feels like it's the character breaking the fourth wall, talking to the audience, and being like, look how hip this game is. It feels more like the protagonist acting as a PR rep and be like, here's why you should spend 60, 70 dollars on this game instead of just letting the game speak for itself. And that's where I think this trailer falls short. But a deeper explanation is provided by this individual right here, Derek Liu, who is a professional game trailer editor. And I love his breakdown of this. It's very constructive. And, you know, the trailer is really just not good. I don't think that means the game's going to be bad, but it just doesn't make a good impression for the kind of game this will turn out to be. If this is how the character will be throughout the whole game, constantly being quippy, um, you know, then it's just not something that's going to appeal to a lot of people. But my hope is that the trailer is just, you know, its own little thing. But by putting out a trailer like that, it just shoots the marketing on the foot. The other problem is when the narrator is super hype, but you're a cold audience who hasn't had time to warm up to the game in any way. Think of Awkward E3s where presenters awkwardly say something like, this is the most amazing game of all time before you've seen any footage. 
a trailer is like a first date, but with salesy narrator, it's a first date where one of the parents is there extolling your date's virtues. Even if the date speaks for themselves, you won't take them at their word. They're great. You'll decide for yourself based on observation. The date itself will speak for itself, just like how you need to let the game, the experience, speak for itself. The other problem is the overlay text brings extra attention to the dialogue. This is standard for digital posts or digital uh, spots like the ones you find on Twitter. The graph Graphics put emphasis on the weakest part. Based on comments, people are interested in the gameplay, but the dialogue turns them off. Yeah, as I was watching the trailer, I was reading the dialogue, and I wasn't, I wasn't actually focusing much on what was going on in the footage. And the footage is the most interesting part. That's where I think Forspoken's uh, strengths really lie, and that's the part that's really been undercut by the dialogue and the text being so prominently featured in the footage. Also, the thing about the talking cuff is just wasted time since it doesn't even talk in the spot and it's not a novel story or character hook. That's the thing, I haven't seen enough of this game to even know what she's talking about with the talking cuff. Was that presented at some point? Not to mention she hypes that part so much when a talking cuff doesn't seem like anywhere close to the most interesting thing this isekai world has to offer. This is especially weird because the delivery of a line makes it sound like our minds should be as blown as hers. 100% there's a dissonance between what she's experiencing and what the audience is experiencing, and she's the player character. Also, I know these spots are made knowing most views will be with the video muted, but the music is basically treated like background noise, which makes the spot extra flat. Indeed, the voiceover was a lot louder than the game, sound effects, and the music itself and so it just the, the sound mixing was off which further emphasized the kind of cringy dialogue which didn't serve as a spot at all the soundtrack is carried by the dialogue which is the weakest part the other problem is the tone of the dialogue doesn't feel like it matches the visuals i 100 percent agree with that too it might work in the game but here it feels disconnected someone in a recent stream of mine described this phenomena well as two different conversations one is going to dominate the thing this trailer does is cover these basics, and then you, know, you can read this for yourself, the stuff that was featured in the trailer. This does not stand out. There's no specificity about, you know, the killing monsters aspect, the magic abilities aspect, the talking cuffs aspect, dragons and all these things. It's such a short trailer. Just show us all these things. Release like a 10, 15 minute full straight gameplay presentation that highlights the element of being transported into another world and dragons being prominently featured in this world and what makes the talking cuff so interesting and what sorts of magic abilities will entice us and the kinds of monsters we'll get to kill. You know, just, just show us. Stop hyping the game through just words. Just, you know, let us experience the game through the footage so that we can look forward to getting our hands on it. Derek then proceeds by highlighting some trailers that do get it right, like this 12 Kingdoms trailer, which is an isekai, and you get that sense from the trailer because it doesn't try to tell you how fantastical this all is, it just gives you that feeling through the music, through the visuals, through what's presented, letting the game and its visuals speak for itself, so that you are already getting the vibe without it being shoved in your face and shoved down your throat through a salesperson. So stuff like this already creates a stronger impression than what Forspoken did. And then for something more comedic, he points out Broforce. But in this case, the energy of the trailer <laughs> matches the dialogue. You know, the trailer is edited in such a way, and I mean, the kind of game that this is, that kind of high energy, insane chaos, craziness, like, it goes in line with the kind of dialogue that's being presented here, so it's all... <laughs> Alright, I'm, I'm gonna turn this off for a sec. I mean, it, it may be a lot, but the game is also a lot, and so it's all in line with each other. Uh, it's all synergizing really well, and it makes for a good comedic trailer. Whereas Forspoken is in conflict with itself because the dialogue is trying to be all comedic and quippy, but the trailer itself is trying to present this magical, mystical, isekai world. And that dissonance is just a big turnoff. Derek finishes off with this forespoken digital spot. The hype level and the words and performance really just feel like someone being forced to be a salesperson, which makes it super awkward. And then he highlights the trailer we were first looking at by saying this spot doesn't really surprise me because the previous trailers are just kind of okay. This sets off alarm bells because the hip hop music screams to me. We're trying to inject cool into this because we don't know what else to do. And as compelling as the visuals of the game were, I do agree that once the hip hop 
pop music started to kick in, I was like, well, that's just so counter to what an isekai is. Hip hop music, that's very familiar. What you need to present with an isekai is something magical, something that really brings out a sense of wonder through the music and visuals. And music is such a big part of the vibe that something evokes. And when you let that familiar hip hop music of the present contemporary world undercut the isekai aspects of stuff that is wondrous and that we've never seen before, when you don't hear the music that goes in line with the mysticism at display, again, there's a dissonance there that just uh, undercuts the magic that the game is presenting. I think Derek provides great advice here. Never feel you need to apologize for your game or tout its commonalities because you're worried people won't like what makes it unique. Not all game hooks are successful or desired, but give people just enough to know the desired genre conventions, then move on to the hooks. Don't undercut the identity of your game for mainstream mass appeal because a lot of the mass appeal for something unique comes from that unique identity. So spotlight that unique identity as much as possible because for Spoken, I do feel like the thing that's really messing with its marketing is the hippiness of it all and the quippiness of it all that I feel like is trying too hard. And so Derek's suggestion, one that I agree with, is remove the dialogue and graphics, let the gameplay shine for itself. And then when it comes to music, you know, if in-game music isn't good for whatever reason for the cues of this trailer for the type of editing required for the spot, you know, just find something else that just is a little more punchy and fun. If you are going for punchy and fun dialogue, find music that matches up with that. But mainly be honest and true to the tone of the game because, you know, people want to get a genuine sense for what this game is and not something that's disguised on the surface. Derek then highlights a cut that somebody else made for the Forspoken trailer, the this one right here with the quippy dialogue, and just edited it differently so that the what's going on in the background also matches up with the uh, overly hypey dialogue. So let's check that out real quick. I'm somewhere that's not what I would call Earth. I'm seeing freaking dragons. And, oh yeah, I'm talking to a cop. So yeah, this, uh, this music definitely amps up the, the hypeness. It matches up more with the dialogue. I still don't think this would be a well-received trailer, but it is definitely a lot less cringy than the one we were presented because there is more of an alignment between the tone of the dialogue and the tone of the trailer itself and the footage and the gameplay that's being shown, the music that uh, was used. But when I look at gameplay of Forspoken, it doesn't evoke hip hoppy, you know, Sonic the Hedgehog's level of high energy kind of vibe. And so I do feel like even if this is a better version of the trailer that we were shown, it still it, it still feels weirdly inappropriate. And the thing is, it's not just Forspoken that does this. I feel like a lot of video game trailers are undercut by, you know, hip hop music instead of just using the in-game track that's beautiful and wonderful and unique and highlights the identity of the game. And, you know, video game music, I think, is some of the best music in the world. And for that to take a back seat for your typical hip hop music that you've already heard a million times, that just, um, there's a lack of confidence for your game's identity. Um, or if you do pick sort of a mass media song, make it something that uh, makes sense with the tone of the trailer and the identity of your game that goes in line with the tone of your game. And I think Hideo Kojima is uh, really good at that. Sometimes he does pick, you know, famous songs or kind of uh, songs that were already released, uh, maybe some indie song that nobody knows about, like Low Roar for Death Stranding. You know, Low Roar is an Icelandic band that Kojima discovered, I think, when he was on a trip to Iceland and he walked into like a, a vinyl store or something or uh, some kind of music store and he heard this in the background. He's like, what is that? I feel like that would go great with the trailer that I'm making. But the tone of Low Roar's uh, music is so aligned with the bizarreness that Kojima's presenting with Death Stranding that it was perfect. Or Metal Gear Solid 5 using Allegia by New Order or using Mike Oldfield's Nuclear for its trailers, the way they were edited and the kind of tone that Metal Gear Solid 5 went for, 
You know, it, it all just synergized beautifully together. So those, those are some of the best trailers out there. Hideo Kojima knows how to make game trailers. And those are trailers that are great examples of being able to use music that is not within the original soundtrack of the game itself, but finding the appropriate music, be it, you know, popular music or be it, you know, indie hidden gem music. But with all that said, look, what I've seen of the game still does look decently impressive enough that I'm like, all right, I'm curious about this. You've got my curiosity and I hope you can capture my attention with uh, some of the uh, future gameplay footage or trailers that we'll see down the line, hopefully you know, better edited with... Uh, a tone that is more appropriate for what this kind of game seems to be. For now though, this trailer, yeah, it's being torn to shreds by community responses from the God of War post to a similar satirical post of the Yakuza games that's also garnered like 20,000 likes among many other posts that just, uh, yeah, ridicule this game left and right. The coolest gameplay in the world could not make me play a game with this dialogue for more than three minutes. That's the impression this game's made. Again, I don't know if this is actually the tone of the game, but if it is, I do agree. I, I wouldn't like that level of quippiness 24-7. I hope they can start winning back the audience with future trailers that understands where they went wrong with this one. Or at the very least, that's one man's take, and this is kind of how the trailer is being received uh, overwhelmingly. Let me know in the comments below what your thoughts and opinions are on the trailer, on the game in general, and whether you think the trailer is representative of the final game, or if you just think it's a really bad trailer, but the game still has a lot of potential. And to be further updated on all things gaming news, reviews, and discussions, stay tuned right here on Yong Yeah. I'll see you guys next time. Yong out.